I also cannot easily say Marx became a young Hegelian. I think the things are, are much more complicated. The term young Hegelian was first used in a, in a negative sense against certain authors and then very quickly they turned this, used this for themselves uh, as a positive name. But there is also the problem, what is the content of young Hegelianism? Now we come to the question uh, of the young Hegelians. In most of the literature it is taken for granted that the Hegelian school in the 1830s had a split in the so-called old Hegelians, rather conservative, and the young Hegelians, rather progressive, and that Marx together with uh, the persons from the Doctor Club um, became a young Hegelian, that he had a, a certain period of being young Hegelian. In my book, in this first volume, I articulate um, questions to both assumptions. The assumption that there was a clear split of the Hegelian school in two sub-schools I think is an exaggeration. There was a differentiation in the school in the 1830s, but it didn't really produce two new, school, two new schools. Um, the so-called old Hegelians are not at all uh, uniform or, or only uh, approximately uniform. In the literature it is reflected that there is no consensus who really belonged to, to the old Hegelians. There are two or three guys, extremely conservative, you can find them in, in every list, but beyond these two or three guys, sometimes they are um, they add persons which other authors add to the young Hegelians. So, it is not very clear what it is. With the young Hegelians it is a little bit more clear because the term young Hegelian was first used in a, in a negative sense against certain authors and then very quickly they turned this, used this for themselves uh, as a positive name. But there is also the problem, what is the content of young Hegelianism? In these times the, the opinions, the concepts uh, changed very quickly. So in, in one study they distinguish five periods of young Hegelian thinking, but these five periods uh, cover only two or three years. So each period is less than, than one year and uh, then they, they, they uh, differentiate in, in so many directions that um, it, it becomes, it makes not very much sense uh, to speak of one group. So I would say the old Hegelians are not really a school. The young Hegelians started to be a school or they, they had in common a, a certain critique of Hegelian philosophy, but before they really could form a school they had so much differences that there was not being uh, a school. So in the book I don't take for granted the notion of uh, old Hegelians and young Hegelians. First I try to, to criticize these notions. And because I am critical with these notions I also cannot easily say Marx became a young Hegelian. I think the things are, are much more complicated um, like this. 
Marx studied Hegel in a time where uh, Hegel's philosophy was criticized on the one hand by right-wing authors who criticized that Hegel is a critic of state, uh, that he demolishes uh, religion and that this philosophy is very dangerous. On the other hand, Hegel was criticized by young authors, partly uh, former pupils of him, being too much accommodated, too much conservative and that Hegelian philosophy has to be developed on new roads. So Marx already developed his own ideas in the middle of these two very different critiques of, of Hegelian philosophy and this is reflected in his PhD thesis where he criticizes both uh, treatments of Hegel's philosophy. But the result was not that uh, Marx said, now I come and I'm the real Hegelian, I tell what, what uh, really Hegelian uh, philosophy is. This time has finished, he came too late to become an orthodox Hegelian. No, on the shoulders of these two different critics, he himself developed his own critic of Hegel, of Hegel's philosophy, which is only delivered to us in an indirect way, in the way in which he used Hegelian notions in his PhD thesis. For a certain time he really had the plan to write uh, something criticizing uh, Hegel's philosophy, uh, uh, not a fundamental critic, more a, a critic also in the line of, of the philosophy, but he didn't do this. So very early I, I try to show in my book that Marx had his own approach to, to Hegel's philosophy and that many interpretations of the late Marx, where it is said, yes, Marx applied Hegelian uh, dialectics to this or that field of knowledge, that this is nonsense, that already the very young Marx had an understanding of Hegel that a simple application to take a method from one place using it uh, at another place sounds as, as a kind of nonsense as well to what Marx did as well to what Hegel did because in, in Hegel you cannot separate method so easily from the content which is treated uh, by the method. And in so far I try to show in, in the book not only the traditional notion of old Hegelians, young Hegelians are misleading, but also the very easy uh, way to say, yes, Marx was a young Hegelian, it is very big uh, simplification. And then we have this famous uh, doctor's club, which was mentioned from Marx in his letter to his father. Every biography mentions uh, this doctor's club sometimes bringing uh, a lot of details. But the two only sources we have for this doctor's club is the letter Marx wrote uh, to his father in November uh, 37 and a letter Bruno Bauer wrote to Karl Marx in uh, the year 39. The many details you can find in several biographies are not really related to Marx's Doctors' Club, but to other clubs. It was very usual in this time that students or young doctors met in small groups discussing uh, contemporary philosophy and, and politics and because Hegel was uh, the most important philosopher they of course discussed Hegel's philosophy. And Many biographers just put together all these reports we can find about such discussion circles and say this is the doctor's club. 
But this is nonsense, because from some we know definitely it cannot be the doctor's club of Marx, the reports are related to later years when, for example, Bruno Bauer was not anymore in, uh, in Berlin, or uh, we know that Marx didn't know certain members of, of other clubs. So, the only members we can sure to be uh, in this doctor club, besides Marx, was Althaus, who had studied philosophy and now was teaching at uh, the Berlin uh, University. Later he became a professor, but not very important. The second is uh, Adolf Rutenberg, who in very early times was a close friend of Marx. Also, Rutenberg worked at the Renanian newspaper later. Much later he became a national liberal, a more right-wing guy. And then the two main persons, mainly for, for Marx, were uh, Bruno Bauer, I already mentioned, and uh, Karl Friedrich Köppen, who in the years of Berlin was maybe the closest or one of the closest personal friends of Marx also. He was a historian and Bruno Bauer a theologian. And all these guys were influenced by Hegel. And what Marx wrote uh, in the letter to his father was not what was very often interpreted. It was not that they convinced him from Hegelian philosophy. He wrote to his father that he himself came close to Hegel's philosophy by writing this dialogue uh, Cleantes. And then, when he was close to Hegel's philosophy, he met these persons from the doctor club and in the discussions he had there, he was confirmed, he was bound more to Hegel's philosophy, but it was not the origin. And therefore, one has to ask, what was the origin, why he came to, to Hegel's philosophy? And the answer, I try to give reason in my book, is that it was Hegel's critique of the aesthetic uh, ideas Marx was following. The critique was so convincing that Marx didn't see uh, an exit and he had to accept that the Hegelian philosophy is much better than what he had in mind before. I think this, this passage through the critique of Romanticism was the important step to start with Hegel and then the Doctors Club and especially I suppose Bruno Bauer played a role to, to confirm this passage to, uh, to the Hegelian philosophy by, by Marx. Mm -hmm.